kick off because it's just it's gone seven and we were just gassing. Um, so just um, very quickly from me to welcome everybody um, tonight. This is my first Zoom webinar um, since returning um, to Scottish Cycling. So just to give a quick summary of staff, um, you, most of you are probably aware that there was a combination of maternity leave for myself and Steph, um, who, you know, you would sometimes get um, uh, permits and things from. But then we were all put on furlough as well just in the summer. So that's us all back um, from furlough. Um, tonight we've got um, myself, so I'm Sarah, I'm events manager. We've got Ashley there as well that looks after our lovely um, volunteer workforce and Morvin, um, our events officer, who are waving but may not be showing on your screen right now, um, handling their names are in the corner. Now, Steph was back with us um, for her three days a week, but she has, just as of last week, been put back on furlough um, just to get us through the winter a little bit, because obviously we still don't have a flurry of events happening at the moment. So um, that's a wee update there. But um, it's been a funny old year, and um, it's taken a wee while to catch up. Um, but Mormon has done an absolutely fantastic job holding the fort. Um, while the rest of us have been off on furlough and actually we've come back to hear about you know a wonderful program of webinars and things and that's really across the organization and um, not just with events but more done an absolutely fantastic job delivering them so i hope you guys have managed to pick up on a few of them um, and that you're receiving our newsletters which both of these are things that we would have loved to do before and it's funny how weird old world of COVID pushes us towards this kind of online platform and I think um, we're really benefiting from it. So um, absolutely keen to hear your feedback and, and things from the webinars that have happened. Um, but tonight we're going to finish the year off with a wee session from Ashley, which will be nice for Ashley to get back into the um, role as well and then a wee bit of fun at the end. So um, just a wee thank you for me for joining us tonight and um, for coming on this weird old journey of 2020 uh, and I hope you enjoy yourself tonight but I shall now go on mute and hand over to Ashley. Because you've all missed my voice so much so there we go so basically the agenda for tonight we're going to do a little bit about goal setting and planning and um, will be a bit familiar to some of you um, have a little discussion about it and then end with a little Christmas quiz because I don't know about you, I've not done enough quizzes this year. <laughs> so depending on how much we natter for, um, we'll go on till about eight o'clock at the latest. So goal setting. Um, some of you might recognise some of these slides from March um, when we had the Commissaire Conference just before the world shut down. <laughs> um, so it'll be jog some of your memories. Um, but it's definitely worth going over again. So goal setting, why should we bother? We had a really good chat about these different thing, different opinions back in March. There's a lot of reasons why people don't want to set goals or have any sort of plans or targets with their volunteering and officiating. To name a few, being happy with where their event is, and being happy with their um, officiating is and not really wanting to set goals and plans like you do in your work life. But I, I'd argue that each of these people could benefit from having a plan. So for example, with the first person who's got this fabulous event that everybody wants to ride, um, what happens to that event when you stop? Who's gonna carry it on? Do, do you want it to carry on or do you just want to leave it as your wonderful legacy? And the second person who's a regional con, do they, would they benefit from having a plan in place to get, um, get to grips with the role? Um, as we know, once we've done our traineeship, um, and we often compare it to getting your driver's license. You tick all the boxes to get your driver's license, but what you really learn is when you're out there in the field. So this person might benefit to having some sort of plan and um, to make them a well-rounded regional con. And the third person there, they're so busy that they don't have time to think any further than the end of the season. Again, they might help from a plan because it might help them get a bit more balanced. 
officiating is lots of fun um, and my personal life is important and that pesky thing called work often gets in the way as well if you're not happily retired so maybe having a plan would help that get a bit more balanced and if that means cycling has to take a bit of a back seat for a while then that, that's okay and the fourth person the national com they've gone through the pathway they're really happy they've got loads of experience but they just want to stay at national level they don't want to go any further so why really would they need a plan well they've got all this knowledge to share so maybe part of their plan might be that they want to get more involved in mentoring or maybe it might just be how do they keep their high standard <clears throat> and high worth ethic going through so what cpd like tonight would they be attending and the last one i do this for fun and i don't want to make it too much like my workplace and set targets and plan my life away i get that <laughs> and we don't want our personal life to get too much like work and and start just writing things away and i'm not here to tell you to write goals or five-year plans 10-year plans but i just want to give you the tools so that if you do decide you want to do it, that you are equipped to do it. So, What are the other benefits to goal setting? Well, it assists with your motivation. Um, we all know in events, and whether it's your officiating or if you're an event organizer, that sometimes it can be quite a hard slog. Um, you can get quite high levels of criticism at times. And sometimes you don't get a lot of praise. So being able to take a step back and look back at those goals, you can look at those personal things that you want to achieve and your personal progression, and that can help you stay motivated rather than focusing on any negativity that might be there if you uh, at an event. It can help to focus your area and focus your attention on areas that you want to improve. Um, for example, if uh, it's a trainee going up to regional, they might have ticked all those boxes, but actually want to build more confidence on an area like um, the pits and cyclocross. Having goals increases your effort and your persistence just by having them. It can increase your learning because you're always searching for different ways to achieve them. And it can help aid in your mental toughness. Now, I don't know if anybody has been to many of the British Cycling, uh, webinars, but Reese from British Cycling spoke a bit about mental toughness in the September webinar they did on sports psychology. So it's definitely worth listening to a bit of that if you have any time, if you haven't already. So you're setting your goal. A lot of you have seen this in, in work or education, but you, to help make them something that you can achieve, it helps to write them down to be smart goals. So specific, measurable, attainable, I prefer the word relevant to realistic here and timely. So what is the specific thing that you want to achieve? And how are you going to be able to measure that? How are you going to see the progress to you becoming a national commissaire, for example? It has to be something achievable. So you might not want to be aiming to be a UCI or have a UCI level event run next year that might not be enough time to achieve that and maybe not realistic but also having a time time limit on these things as well helps you focus and helps you really get on with it so for example I want to uh, this person wants to become a regional downhill commissaire to com complement their regional cross-country qualification. So this is specific because they're telling you exactly that they want to become regional in another discipline. It's measurable because they're either going to be a regional or a trainee or they're not. Is it attainable? Well, um, we don't have a lot of information about the person, but as long as they've got the motivation and the time, there's no reason why they couldn't strive to do that. Um, is it attainable? Again, it should shouldn't be, it should be achievable if they dedicate their time to it. And is it relevant? Well, it seems to be relevant to them. There's a reason why they're doing it. It links in nicely with their downhill qualifications. So having something that's relevant in that way does help your motivation. 
And is it is it a timely goal? Well, reading on, they've decided that they want to try and do it by the end of 2021. So if there was a mountain bike course at the start of 2021 and lots of mountain bike events on throughout the summer, then they might well be able to achieve it. And you can see at the bottom, they want to, to achieve it. They want to make sure that they link in with different organizations to um, help them on their journey to do that. So, so if we look at this in practice, two of our lovely colleagues have kindly offered to share their goals after the session that we ran in March. So Colin's going to speak to us first about goals he came up with after the five-year plan session. And then Julian's going to follow up a little bit more about his thoughts for the future. So Colin, if you don't mind unmuting. Yeah, evening everyone. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I set myself a sort of a long-term five-year goal and some short-term goals. My ultimate goal is to achieve UCI mountain bike commissaire status. And that's kind of like a five-year plan. But in the interim period is to get to the national uh, mountain bike commissaire and the elite national uh, status for that as well as the short term plans, which is continuing to support local racing, help and develop and mentor uh, regional uh, commissaires coming up, the trainees, um, etc. Obviously, the biggest challenge this year has been COVID, a uh, lack of races, a uh, lack of training um, uh, and just the ability to get to stuff. Although it's, there's been some UCI stuff last three, three nights, there's been some UCI uh, webinars on uh, for commissaires, which has been really good and, and it was kind of with not having races this year, that, that was a really good brush up on the skills and just an insight into the the, the national, elite national and UCI world. Um, so yeah, it's just continue working on those plans, but I found having the plan when I came into commissary and from, a, from being a coach and event organizer, having that plan and achieving it. So um, you take it off as you go and work with other commissaries, et cetera, um, at all levels uh, to gain knowledge and experience and, and get to as many events as we can and, and, and get the experience there. So that's really my goals. So out of interest, where do you keep your goals? Do, you, do are they just in a notebook somewhere or I keep them I have a I have a commissaire notebook that I keep just purely for all my mountain bike stuff. So I keep them in there and, uh, and I can ref, uh, refer back to them and reflect on them and what I've done and what I've achieved and I keep a log of everything, every event I've been to, what I've gained, my experience, my knowledge, so I can I can look back on it and the highs and lows. So it's just really my own my own little log from everything and it's got coaching, everything in it. So it's just my I go to my uh, my diary, you know, of, of my life as a in cycling, really, <laughs> from events to everything. So yeah, that's where I, where I keep it all. No, so that's really interesting. Thank you very much, Colin. Yeah. Julian. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks very much. Uh, evening, everybody. Uh, so just as a introduction, Julian Howell, one of the founding members of Happy Trails Cross Collective, small club based in Gala Shields. Um, we formed the club just with one goal, really, and that was to put on Tweed Cross, cyclocross race um, in the borders that we have in August every year. Um, we've only run it three years, and our goals were really to attract more organising members and team members to join the club because we were a really tight and small group, and we realised unless we brought other people on board, we, we were not going to survive. So we had plans for February to get more people on board um, to make it easier for them to join and some ideas about how to attract people. Um, obviously that all came to an end. Uh, we also had goals to grow um, the event because we were attracting a lot of racers from Scotland and also from the Northeast. So we had a very good um, base of support. Uh, and we just started to create links with one of the local schools, uh, high schools. We had a great cycling club and we were just starting to organize coaching sessions and get more kids involved in the kids races as well. Um, so with COVID, we uh, scrapped the idea of a race very, very quickly um, and have tried to use that terrible word pivot and um, think about what else we could do. So we trained in a COVID coordinator, helping put on uh, guided gravel events effectively for people around the area so that they could get together with other people and, and, and cycle in a legal and COVID uh, responsible way, which went down really well. Um, 
And now we're thinking about this upcoming year where racing is certainly still going to be uncertain. Um, and maybe thinking about an off-road, gravel, time trial type format um, to keep people interested, keep people uh, cycling um, in a way that is perhaps easier to organise than uh, cyclocross races. So we don't really have any fixed goals. We're just kind of staying flexible about uh, 2021. Yeah, that, that makes sense, staying flexible. We don't know what's happening one week to next, do we? Yeah. But uh, I thought that was quite interesting. You were saying that the the Happy Trails Cross Collective, their kind of goal at the start of this year or post the event last year, that you to look at your organising members and, and really get more people involved in the team. Yeah, yeah. Because we had some people having uh, family, having having new families, other people with a lot of work, work commitments, I mean, as a lot of people have. So it's about trying to attract new committee members, dividing up the work into perhaps smaller parcels that became more manageable for, for people um, and effectively just kind of bribing people with beer and pizza to come along and uh, join the organising committee. <laughs> I think that's quite attractive to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Julian. Right, so. Ink it, don't think it. No, I'm not suggesting tattoos, everybody. <laughs> We're not going that far, but I think it's really, really important to write down your goals somewhere visible. Um, Colin was saying that he kept his in a the his notebook, his I guess it could be your little your little Bible of your cycling. Um, Julian's saying their his are staying a bit more flexible just now, but. If you write your goals down and look at them regularly and reevaluate them regularly, you are much more likely to achieve them than if you don't. One, because you'll probably forget about them. But two, writing them down just gives it that little bit more importance and priority to it. And if you're seeing it more often, then you, that should help motivate you and, and focus yourself when you go out. So it might be that you look at them when you are unappointed to an event or maybe during calendar comp calendar compilation when you're looking at starting your event for the following year or it might be part of build it into your self-reflection after you've had your event look at what went well what didn't go so well what is helping you through your journey but i think it's very very important that you do write down those goals somewhere ashley Yes, who's speaking? Uh, John McCracken. I Hello, don't, John. Uh, just a small aside uh, on the graphic that you've got up there. I don't know whether you meant it or not, but it's very Christmassy because it reminds me of Scrooge's pen. <laughs> I didn't mean it, but actually, yeah, it does think of Scrooge, doesn't and I'm, it? And I'm desperately waiting in the Muppets Christmas Carol coming <laughs> on as well. So, well done. I, it's maybe accidental, but it's very Christmassy in that sense. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or Bob, Bob Cratchit's pen, let's put it that way. That's, that's, <laughs> that would be better. So, well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> sorry, um, Ashley, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint. I'm not going to break out into any uh, Muppet Christmas Carol tunes. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll, I'll need a couple of sherries before I do that. I see, right. <laughs> so... Goals, how do we get there? So set yourself small realistic targets, try and prioritize these goals and have longer term ones, but shorter, one, shorter ones to build yourself through the season. Keep good records, just as Colin was saying, it's really helpful to have um, like a record of your event. If you're an event organizer, it might be how many people you got and breaking it down into the different categories and see oh actually we did we got an extra five ten women at this year or oh look we really built on our youth or something like that if you're an official and you're looking to move your way through the pathway for some of the application forms as you get higher up and um, if you're applying to bc or uci level then they do want to know what you've done and want to know what you did at those events so keeping good records is very important Talk to people. If you need help, there's always someone out there to listen. There's really good community in, in Scotland between the officials and the event organizers, as you know. Um, but sometimes we can feel quite isolated, especially at the moment. Um, but if you're somebody up in Inver Inverness or wanting to connect and learn a bit more about 
track racing, then it might be you could um, really use the knowledge in the central belt and you just need to make those connections. And it's so much easier now that we're all using things like Zoom and Teams and Skype. We can keep a really vibrant community sharing knowledge. And include us where you can. When there's major events on, we always get asked for volunteers and who we think would be useful in different roles, whether that's an officiating role or it's back at Glasgow 2018, they were looking for people that could be drivers, for example. So if you've got an interest and ambition to be involved in things like that, let us know. Um, we also usually get a heads up when there's courses on for higher level events. So let us know that you're interested so that we can help you or put you in touch with somebody in the community that can give you helpful advice to get hopefully get you positioned onto that course. So I'm ending with one of my favourite pictures. You've got your goal, you've got your five year plan, and we'd all love it if it was that straight line to the finish line. But we know it's not. It's more like that bottom picture where there's all these pitfalls and um, things holding you back and you might be in your personal life. It might be out with your control. For example, you might be a regional track commissaire wanting to get onto the national track comm course and you do everything right. You go to loads of events, you get into a brilliant position, but you just don't get a place in the course. There's just the other candidates must just have that little something else that you didn't have on this occasion. And it's a setback, but it might not stop you getting to the end goal. But you can look back at your goals and think, right, how can I get into a better position for next time? If you're an event organizer, it might be that you had an aim to get more women into your event and you do everything right, you think. You get in touch with the Women's Development Group at Scottish Cycling to ask for their advice and get their input. And just on the day, you just don't get those entries that you hope for. It's not a reason to give up. It's a reason to sit back, evaluate again, and hopefully reassess your goals and get to that checkered flag at the end. In some cases with your goals, it is worth saying that you might not get to that final checkered flag at the end. You might only end up at flag number three. It might, for whatever reason, for example, you might not ever get on that national track commissaire course, but you just need to reevaluate your goals and your plans and think, well, I'm not on the national course, but how can I be a blooming good, vital uh, regional track commissaire that um, can mentor other people through the process and be there at national uh, support, national comms at national championships and things. So that uh, chatted for about, well, I've spoken and for most of the past 25 minutes. So I'd love it if we could just break out into a couple of rooms and just have a wee chat about any goals that we have. I know that when at the, com the conference back in March, some people didn't have goals and didn't really feel that they needed goals. So it would be interesting if those people, if they've re-evaluated and they do have goals and those of you that weren't at the conference it would be interesting to hear if you have any goals or plans five-year plans like we've discussed and just a general chat about how we can help each other to achieve them because we're here to support each other and um, to the benefit of the sport in Scotland so that would be very interesting to hear your thoughts and if we have time um in the last 10 minutes if we talked about our goals. Just a wee throw some ideas around about what CPD you guys would like to see in 2021. Because we've been obviously, Morvan's been holding the fort and holding these monthly webinar sessions that have been really good and really well attended actually. So we'd love to keep that momentum going. So if anybody has any ideas on what they'd like to see a CPD, then share it in the discussion or email us afterwards. That would be absolutely wonderful. So that is us. If Morven, if you could split us into breakout rooms, that would be fabulous.